everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got a really fun, huge, tall gift bag, which I'm calling my piñata gift bag, because I've done all of this, you can hear it, this lovely kind of tassel trim, which reminded me of a piñata. You can see it all on the side there. Now the whole box folds flat, whole box, whole bag like so but again that's optional and I'll talk you through that I just recycled from some handles from a fancy um, bag that I had and then I've got this lovely big gift tag here all the papers and everything that I'm using are from the Fiesta Fever paper pack which I'll show you in a moment but it's really big so this is using A4 so it's this piece on the front is the whole piece of A4 it's not been scored or nothing that's the front piece so this is very very similar in terms of structure to the big 12 by 12 one that I done but I was looking back through my gift bags and realized I hadn't done one that uses the full size of A4 and you can also use letter size so you can use this if you've got 11 by eight and a half or the A4 okay so I'll talk you through that and then the back I've just kept plain Again, if you want to, you can obviously do all that. But I've also finished off my holes there with little eyelets just to give it a bit more of a luxury feel. And it is it's gorgeous. I absolutely love this. So I'm going to fold it back down flat because it can still store. I mean, they're not going to go completely flat even if they're up against something. They will still just want to pop up. So, yeah, so let's crack on. So that's the paper pack which I'm down to a few pieces now. So I did use a lot of scrap for this one, which was another reason why I wanted to do it. Okay, so you are gonna need, I've got all these bits here, which is the tassels. So again, that's completely optional. You might just wanna make this as a very large gift bag, so that's fine. I've got some, again, recycled handles there. You can obviously use your ribbon. That one's the tassel that I'm gonna show in a minute, and there are all the other bits and pieces. So. For the main bag, it's really, really straightforward. Put that bit there as well. So you need two pieces of A4 or letter size paper. It's entirely up to you. This is A4, so it's eight and a quarter by eleven and a half. Okay, so I've got two pieces. If you've got the letter paper, that will be eleven by eight and a half, and that's fine to use as well. So you need two pieces of whatever size you want there. Then you'll need two pieces of five by whatever length card it is you're using. So either eleven or 11 and a half or even 12 but the width needs to be five okay so five by whatever length you want there and then one piece of five by this is eight and a quarter I'm um, sorry this is five by nine and a quarter because this is to go if if you're using let me just work this one out because I want to make sure that everybody can do it so this is the size you need for the A4 paper which is the width of eight and a quarter if you're using uh, letter paper which is eight and a half then this piece will need to be nine and a half long okay so it just needs to be the width of whatever it is you're using so hopefully once you watch me put this together then you'll get what I'm saying but this is for A4 size so five by eight um, nine and a quarter <laughs> for letter paper size it's still going to be five but this will be nine and a half just add an inch because you're having a half inch tab on each side okay so back to our two big pieces here if you want it to fold flat one of the pieces will be your back and along the bottom here you want to score it two okay that's all you need to do if you want it to fold flat then on your two side pieces here you need to score at half an inch and at four and a half okay then if you want it to fold flat rotate it and score at two okay and then rotate it back again and score it two and a half all the way down I just come up there all the way down to that first score line just that one that you've done before that's only if you want it to to fold flat okay these measurements here are all the same even if you're using the other sizes okay and even if you've got that longer at nine and a half this will still be the same okay because we're keeping the width as long as your width is five on everything so five 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 then you're fine and then this is the base, so that's that five by um, nine and a quarter or nine and a half. Along the five inch side, you want to score at half an inch and four and a half. 
sorry, bring that down. So you want to score at half and at four and a half. Then along the long side, so you're going to score at half again and basically just rotate it and just score at half. It's easier then, so it doesn't matter what size you've got, just score at half an inch on all four sides. Should have said that at the beginning. Trying to do it so that you can use any size card that you want and try not to confuse you too much along the way. Okay, so that's done now with the scoreboard. So these side pieces here, where we've scored down to this line here, so this score line down to here, we're now going to score from there down to this corner and then there down to that corner. Not to the corner of the card, just the corner of the score lines on each side. And this is what you do with all of your fold flat gift bags. So the little, I'll put a little um, playlist up now of all my fold flat ones and you'll see in all of those tutorials this is exactly what I do. So I'm just scoring there with my metal ruler along at the bottom. Okay, so construction for this is very, very easy, especially if you don't even want it to fold flat, because all you've got is these two score lines here, you're not doing anything else. All you need to do with these bigger pieces is just take a little wedge, just tiny, just off of all of your sides, your kind of, you know, the little tabs, just so you don't get any of it overhanging. Not a lot, because you still want it to obviously stick to the bag, the other side I mean, but just a little bit there you can see I'm taking hardly anything off, okay, like so. And then just burnish those score lines, you should then be able to see these better once I've burnished all of this, that bottom one, and then you can just kind of pinch that one in. And then if you bring it up and kind of push one of the triangle score lines there, you can see there, just bring it up just to kind of define all those score lines, okay? So just repeat that again on the second piece, okay? So you'll have two side pieces like this. Then with your base here, all you want to do is cut those squares out in each corner, like so. So just go around and just remove those squares. Okay, and then we're gonna tidy them up as well. So just take, again, little wedges off of each corner. Again, just to stop any bits of card sticking out from over the edge. And then just burnish all those score lines. You can burnish before or after, it doesn't actually make any difference. Like so. Okay, so that's our base. So you can kind of see now what's happening is all of these pieces here are all going to stick to the bottom. Very easy. But before we do that, I want to decorate my front piece. So if you are having this as a fold flat and you've got the one with the two inch score line there, that's your back. So the plain piece here is what I'm now going to stick all of these on. And this is what is the fun part for me. This is what makes the gift bag. So what I've done is cut strips that are the width of whatever I'm using. So this is the A4, so it's eight and a quarter. Obviously, if you've got the letter paper, then you'd have yours at eight and a half. And then they're two inches thick, okay? And then I've got my trusty vegetable scissors here, but these are great. And if they ever get blunt, just cut them through some um, foil, you know, aluminium foil, kitchen foil, just to kind of sharpen them up again. But all you want to do is just go along and just cut up leaving about a quarter of an inch from the top. It's really, really quick and this is what I use and this is the same technique to make tassels. So these could easily now be turned into tassels if you wanted, but not today. And then just at the end there, so you've just got this trim. And then just with my bone folder, depending on what pattern you want, I may want to have that one, but whatever pattern you want showing you want that facing down. So I want the plain green. So I'd face that down and then just curl all of the edges there. Like so. And now we've got this fun trim. So I've done 17 of those, but again, you may have more, you may use less, it's entirely up to you. Now I've already gone ahead and I've put strips of red tape along the top there. As you can see and now what I'm going to do is lay them out in their piles um, 
so I can kind of pick up from each one as I go. Like so. That's the green, that's more pink. I've got some more of some others because like I said I did raid my scrap drawer. Like so. Okay, so on this one here I started with the green and I started quite high up because obviously it's two inches down. So I you, you come up, yeah, about two inches, all right, because it, it does curl up at the bottom. But you want to stick your first one. So let's go for, what one have I got more of? Let's go for this pink one. Oh, find it here. And you start from the bottom up because obviously you're layering over the top of each one. So I'm just going to peel off my backing, okay, and then just roughly I can kind of straighten one out to see where I need to be, pop that one down, and again just make sure that that one sits nicely, and then stick it down. Already there's our first one, looks so good. Now when I stick the next one down, I stick it, let me just take the backing off of here, I stick it about a quarter of an inch, half an inch up above it. Let me just check that is what I've done. Yeah, so if I just bring it up here, so I'm just going to stick this one about half an inch up, like so. Okay. Like that, I try not to get my fingers stuck. And then again, you just want it. The main thing for this is making sure that you keep it straight. If you find yourself starting to go off at an angle, and you can, you know, rectify it. So each time you stick one down, just hold it up. See, I can see already I've gone slightly down on that side, but it doesn't matter at this point. But as long as you're aware, <laughs> then you can obviously change it. So now I'm going to do this blue one, and I'm just going to work my way all the way up. And I will come back when I'm nearly finished. Okay, so that's now all done. I just love brushing it. <laughs> you can see on the side there how it looks. It looks so good. So now I've got the top. Now you could leave that nice neat strip there, but I have already cut these. So these pieces here are half an inch by whatever the width is that you're using. So in my in, in my case, it's eight and a quarter. Yours would be eight and a half or 12 or whatever it is, like I said, you're using. So. All these measurements will be in my blog as well, so if I have sounded confusing at all, <laughs> just to revert to that because you'll be able to see everything. So I'm just going to add oh, this over the top. It's very, very sticky. Excuse me if my head is in the way, but I want to make sure. There you go, I've lined it all up. Then the other one is to go on the back here. So where your two inch score line is, keep that at the bottom and then just run this along the top. Okay, so that is my front and my back. So now we can start putting it all together. So with your base, where you've burnished and done all of your score lines there, it's entirely up to you whether you want to use red tape or wet glue. I'm going to use red tape and I'm just going to run it along here. It doesn't matter that it doesn't cover the whole half inch um, tab there. This is the red tape, which is very strong anyway but I'm just concentrating on keeping it as close to the score line and not the outer edge. Okay, so if you have got a tape and you know it's a strong one but it's not thick enough, don't worry. Because what I can do is run just a little bit of my wet glue along this other piece here. Okay, so that's the base ready. Then get these pieces all ready as well. So these are the two side ones with your tabs. So again, I'm going to run my tape all the way along, again concentrating on keeping it closer to the score line than the outer side. Okay, and again, whenever you're using red tape, just go along with your bone folder or a ruler and just squeeze out any air bubbles and you'll see because there'll be white little dots and when you go over them, it will go nice and red and that's what you want. You know then that you've got all of that tape stuck down. Okay, so now we're ready to put it all together. So flip your base over and turn in your sides. And then what we do, first of all, is we we'll stick down these. So turn them over. And basically you're going to stick this, lining up your score lines, and stick it down to that. Fold it over. You just want to get a nice, clean join, like so. And then do the other side. 
This is when it's going to get too big for my camera now, so I'm going to end up um, again facing down. Fold, pop that one under, line up your score lines and fold it like so. Again, there's the sides, and now these bits are going to all come in along with the base sides and those sides and we're going to stick the front and the back on so we do the back first okay so fold this one in take off that and it's up to you how you want to do it but this should just be the whole width of that tab so you just want to make sure that you get it perfect like so okay and then <laughs> you can take this side one off here. It's up to you which one you want to do first. Fold it right in, bring it up, and then basically starting from the bottom, you just want to keep it completely flush. Your two inch score line should meet up perfectly with the score lines on this here. You can see there's my two inch one and it matches with that one there. And just very carefully, slowly, make sure it's nice and taut and it meets the top. And you can just go in like that. And then with my bone folder, I'm just going to go in and just really push down on that red tape. Again, getting all the air bubbles out and making sure it's all stuck down. If you've got wet glue, then obviously you've got the wiggle room. Once you use this tape, you know, once it's stuck, there's kind of no way out. So yeah wet glue might be good if you haven't done this style before and then again take this next one off so much static it's all sticking to me and then again fold it under and just I'm holding it up with my hand so it's not actually touching I can really kind of control what bit I want to stick down as I go so again just slowly pinch it as you join this two together there and then when I get near the top, just line that up, flip it over, like so. I've opted to go for a contrast with white sides, but you don't obviously have to do that, you can have it all the same. Okay, so there's our back done. Now we need to do the front. So if you take this bottom piece off, and you can just tack the bottoms down of your sides there, like so and then just kind of fold them in and grab this piece all right and first of all you can just lift up the corner of one of these you don't want to take them right off so just kind of fold see what i've done there just kind of fold it over and then you can just very carefully line that up with the corner and all the way along there and again, I need to take that one off as well. I'm just going to catch it with my scissors. There we go. And just kind of don't pull it right off. Just keep it hanging out. Like so. And then I'll go back to this side here. And hold the top in place. It's all lined up. The bottom's already tacked down. I can just then pull that red tape out. And I know that that is all lined up perfectly. Again, I'm just going to turn it on its side. Even though it's got the tassels on, I can still flatten it just to make sure that's all stuck down. And then back to this side here, hold the top in place. Make sure this is all nicely lined up and just pull that red tape. Again, if you're using wet glue, then obviously you can't do it this way but you'll have the wiggle room, so it won't matter. And again, flip that over, I'm just gonna go in. And look at that, really lovely. This is so strong, this box, or bag, sorry. Really, really strong, it would definitely hold like heavy like wine and beer and stuff like that. Now, to check that it obviously folds flat, push your finger into the top of the triangles there, and at the same time, along that score line at the back, just kind of bring it all together. It will go. And just kind of help it along a little bit there. 
and you can see I'm going to open it back out again. Now I just need to add my holes, so this is obviously the eight and a quarter inch length, so I came in at two and a half inches from the outside and half an inch down, so I, I punched just below this strip that I added. So two and a half, I'm just going to put a little pencil mark on the green there, and again here, two and a half, and again flip it over, okay. And then I've just got my hole punch, and I'm just going to line that up. Like so. And then you can add the metal eyelets, it's optional, I'm going to leave them off for the minute. Feed them through. Then I've got this lovely big gift tag, which I'm going to feed through there. And then that one. and then just pop the ones in the back. And there you have it. A really lovely, huge A4 or letter paper size gift bag. It's just, it's, it's lovely. It's so, so nice. I love this. And obviously I've got this pinata style. So just show you the side there, the back and the side again. And you can see inside, you've just got so much space. They really are spacious and they fold nice and flat. So that's that one there. And here is my other one. Oh, I love them. They're so colourful, they're so fun, and I just <laughs> keep touching them. So there, I hope you like it. I love this one. Um, as always, if you've enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye!